Does your company use HubSpot to track form submissions in which customers become leads? Well, if that's you, that might mean that you might be struggling to track form submissions, especially across Google Ads, Google Analytics, and other marketing platforms. Chances are your form might not redirect to a thank you page to make this easier. It might simply just like mine, where if I click submit here, it might show you a thank you message. And if you are fluent in Google Tag Manager, you might be saying to yourself, hold on, I don't see a form submit event. I don't see anything. What is going on? How do I track that? Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to overcome this with a little bit of code and together we're going to track these pesky form submissions from HubSpot. Now, the reason why HubSpot forms are not working with Google Tag Manager is that if you, like me, you might have embedded these forms as an iframe into your website. Now, don't worry if you don't exactly understand what that means. That just simply means that Google Tag Manager is unable to access all of the events within that form unless we give it some extra information. And this is a very, very common issue with analytics across the board where uh, an iframe is simply a website within another website. It's loading that external file onto your website. And for the user, it feels like you're interacting with one website when in reality you're in interacting with two. And this does present issues from a tracking perspective, but thankfully there's a solution out there that I've, I've developed and I'm here to share that with you. First, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable in Google Tag Manager. This is called a HubSpot form check, which essentially what I've done is I'm checking to see if there's a HubSpot form on your page. And if so, it's going to return true. This, this ties into the trigger that we're going to use, which will use, which will only fire our code when this returns true. You could set this to every page, uh, the code I'm gonna show you in a second, but I do find it's, it's always good to, to do the least amount we need to do from a tracking perspective so that that way our site can stay fast and we're not adding extra code. So the first thing we're going to set up is a check to see if there's a HubSpot form on each page. And if you want, you don't worry about typing out exactly what I've written here. I'm gonna link in the description of, of this video to my GitHub where you can access this code and copy and paste it for your own tag manager. Now, once we've set up that variable, we're going to create a trigger for that. We're building our tag a little bit in reverse than we normally do. Uh, usually I start with the template and then I build my trigger, but today we're gonna do it in a little bit reverse. So for the trigger, what I want to do is create a new one called the HubSpot form page. And that variable we just set up, that is, that's the one that's checking to see if there's a HubSpot form on this page. And if so, it's gonna return true. So for our trigger configuration, this is just gonna be a simple page view, uh, page view setup, but instead of firing it on all page views, we're going to set it to some of them with our key requirement being our HubSpot form check code returns true. So we're, this is our, our trigger. And again, we only want to target this to pages with HubSpot forms. You could run this on all pages, but again, I do recommend uh, targeting it in this way. Now for our actual code, what I've done is I've added an event listener that's going to tie into the iframe on the page. And again, do not worry if this is very technical. You do not have to understand intricacies of this to get it to work. But for those of you that are nerds and want to know what's going on, essentially we're listening for the events that our HubSpot form is putting out there. And then we're going to tie that back into our tag manager. So there are some events. Uh, HubSpot has a, a form callback and an on form submit event. And that we're going to use to trigger a data layer push that also captures the unique form ID so that we can use this trigger to track which forms have been submitted. So this is, without this code, like you saw before, I submitted my form on, web, on my website and nothing happened. Now that we've added this, we're going to start to get a data layer push that we're going to then build our real form submit triggers based off of. 
Now, this is a pretty advanced concept for Google Tag Manager. So I do recommend checking out some of the beginner resources out there and I'll be adding slowly to my library. Uh, but don't worry if this is, uh, sounds very foreign or very high level. This is a very advanced topic in Tag Manager. And usually we do not have to jump through all of these hoops to get our tracking working. But in this case for HubSpot Forms, uh, there, this is a, all the hoops we need to jump through, which again is why if you're, if you're new and you're struggling with this, maybe you just set your HubSpot form to redirect to a thank you page that is unique to that form. That way you don't have to worry about this method, which relies only if you're using that thank you uh, message on the page, like we saw with my form on the site. All right, now what I'm going to do is now that I've set up my data layer push, let's go ahead and test that out to see how that's working on my current contact page. So again, before, if you remember, we didn't see anything. Now we should be able to see a data layer push from our HubSpot form itself. So I'm gonna click submit. And again, remember, I'm not using thank you page, I'm using this thank you message. So if I go back to my tag assistant, Look at that number nine, HubSpot form success. So this event was not there before, but because we added in that tag for the data layer push, we are now able to have an event that we can use for our Google ads, Google analytics tags, whichever platform you wanna choose. Uh, but crucially, this event is now available. And what's really cool about this is that only do we have the event name, we also have this HS form GUID which we can then use to differentiate whether someone filled out my contact form or I have another form I went on my website for my email list that's also a HubSpot form. Each of them has a unique ID. And so I'm going to build triggers that look for those specific IDs. But don't worry, if you only have one form, you can just use this HubSpot form success event. But if you have multiple ones, uh, I like to differentiate it with this HS form uh, ID, which is in the code that I provide, and that's also on my GitHub. Let's go ahead and actually create a data layer variable for that form ID. So I'm going to click on new, and we'll call this data layer. We'll call this HubSpot form ID. And we're going to set this as a data layer variable. I'm going to go back to my tag assistant to get the actual uh, snippets since I don't want to type this. So I'll copy this over and notice it's not nested within every anything. So I can just copy this parameter here and paste that in. So now this is listening for that form GUID and that's what I'm going to use for my other triggers. So just like we did before, we set up the variable first. Now let's set up a specific trigger for my contact form. So I have one started here. And you can notice it's called a uh, custom event for HubSpot. But notice this event is slightly different than what we actually saw within our data layer push. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the actual event name and copy that over. And we'll replace, replace that with HubSpot. And importantly, I need to differentiate my contact form from my mailing list. So I'm going to click some custom events and I'm going to use that new data layer HubSpot form ID, and I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to copy over the exact ID from our data layer that is in with just my contact form, and I'm going to paste it in here. So now if I click save, uh, what I've done before this, I did tie this to my contact us tag, if you uh, do not have a tag, you'll also need to create one. In this situation, I'm setting up a GA4 tag, but you can also use this same trigger for Google Ads, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, whatever you want to track. Uh, the important thing is that the trigger is going to be the same. So now let's, let's verify that this is actually working and that our data is actually passing into GA4. So I'm going to click on preview and we're going to return back to our thank you page. And now we're going to do another test form submission. And notice our HubSpot form success is great. 
and that are contact us form. Now, just, just a quick demo, I'm going to show you, uh, prove out that my mailing list is not firing because again, you always want to check to see if your trigger is firing or tag in, in that general uh, when it's not supposed to. Tagging is a little bit of like the Goldilocks principle, not too hot, not too cold. In this situation, it's firing at the perfect times, but not too little or too less. So I'm going to sl click submit for my, my mailing list. And notice I did get my HubSpot form success event, but we did not have our tag fire. So that just proves that our tag is just firing for our contact form. And if I wanted to, I'll set up a specific tag for my mailing list, repeating the same process I did to build that trigger. Tracking forms in HubSpot can be pretty difficult, but I hope that this method that I showed you is, is helpful and allows you to track the right data on who is coming to your website, what forms are filling out, and tie that back into your media or other efforts. And please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And if you learned anything at all or liked this video, please subscribe and like this video as it'll help me reach more people. This has been Andrew from Data Space Digital. Thanks and have a nice day.